not easy for the Shah of Iran, fascinated by dreams of regional expansion, to see the dramatic progress in all fields taking place in Iraq. He feared a new wave of discontent and social unrest amongst the people of Iran, similar to that which had taken place during the era of Prime Minister Mossadegh. and the Shah had to flee his country. Iran became ruled by chaos. The Shah was brought back after a bloody coup. used to hold his meetings and press conferences in bed. After the return of the Shah, he was arrested and taken to court. The Shah was a classic example of an oppressive dictator. He was overthrown. Khomeini, who inherited the kingdom, surpassed the Shah's rule by far. No wonder then that Tehran remained the scene of confrontations and riot. The Iranian opposition was ruthlessly suppressed. In Paris, a member of the opposition described to journalists after escaping from Iran, the methods used by the so-called revolutionary guards. They tied my hands to a torture bed and started flogging the inside of my feet with an electric wire from 7 p.m. till midnight. I lost consciousness three times. They tortured me in front of my wife and daughter and struck the letter on the head. Then they intensified the beating till I completely lost consciousness. I woke up in hospital but they continued torturing me. When I returned to the interrogation room, I saw blood everywhere, on the door, the walls, the chairs. The state of the prisons has deteriorated dramatically since Khomeini came to power. The prisoners who would not speak despite torture were sent to remote places. I was sent to Meshed, and during transfer, I was able to escape. Khomeini was not satisfied with the extent of the damage he had inflicted upon his people. He tried to impose his regime upon Iraq and other neighboring Arab countries. He instigated a demonstration against the Iraqi embassy in Tehran, thinking this might be able to shake the government in Iraq. acts were to come. In July 1980, a top Iranian official declared that if the Iranian army marched towards Baghdad, no one could stop it. From north to south, in numerous locations at and behind the frontiers, more and more shelling and violations of the ground and airspace. Fourth, 
1980. The Iranian artillery and phantom planes attack a number of Iraqi towns as well as the oil installations of Nafta Hame. Iraq finds itself in the face of an undeclared war, but enemy shelling continues in spite of all warnings. On the 17th of September, 1980, Iran blocked Shah al-Arab to obstruct Iraqi navigation and oil exports. The Iraqi answer came the same day, decisive and clear. The rulers of Iran have violated this accord from the very beginning through interference in the domestic affairs of Iraq, exactly as the Shah did, and because of refusing to return the Iraqi territories. For these reasons, I here announce before you that the accord of March the 6th, 1975, is terminated on our part too. continued to intensify its violations. All along the borders, Iraqi tanks rolled to regain border areas which Iran had failed to evacuate, following Khomeini's repeated refusals to abide by the Algiers Accord. According to that agreement, Iran had agreed to return to Iraq six frontier territories that had encroached upon. In the south, there were two small zones in the Amara region. They were completely integrated into the motherland. 